Good afternoon. The next item of business today is a statement by Keith Brown, Cabinet Secretary on Prestwick Airport. Uh, Mr Brown will take questions at the end of the statement, so if anybody wishes to ask a question, I'd encourage them to press their requested seat buttons now. And I call on Keith Brown. Okay, thank you, President. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to provide an update on Glasgow Prestwick Airport. Uh, members, of course, will recall the circumstances which led to the Scottish Government buying the airport at the end of 2013. Uh, the previous owners were ready to close it down and walk away, which, in our view, would have delivered a devastating blow to the local economy. Our decision to buy Presswick was taken in the knowledge that with time, with perseverance and with innovative thinking, Presswick could be a great success. There was also the question of, according to various estimates, up to 300 direct jobs and nearly 3,000 indirect jobs hanging on the future of the airport. Uh, we've been clear since 2013 that the business must operate at arm's length from the Scottish Government and ministers. Appropriate governance arrangements are in place. These mean that the CEO and his team, overseen by the operating company board, are responsible for progressing and agreeing specific commercial deals. There is no role for ministers in specific commercial discussions. Ministers do not sanction specific deals or agreements between the business and any of its customers. As the sole shareholder, however, ministers are supportive of the overall strategic direction of the business. A five-year strategic plan for 2017 to 2022 was published by the airport in April 2017 and is available on their website. That plan sets out how the team will grow all aspects of the business and how they will seek out new revenue streams. I expect Presswick's senior management team to actively seek out all potential business opportunities to maximise the use of the assets of the airport, to reduce its reliance on loan funding and ultimately to return it to the private sector. As set out in the strategic plan, these efforts include growing passenger numbers, developing freight handling, enhancing maintenance, repair and overhaul facilities, increasing traffic through the fixed base operation, raising income from property rental, and also progressing the spaceport aspirations that the airport has. Now, winning that business, especially in relation to passenger numbers, is not easy in a highly competitive aviation market. But the airport team continue to build Presswick's reputation and build the brand. They continue also to build relationships with customers and potential customers to secure the new business needed for success. Now, I think we're all aware, President, also that Presswick is not a typical airport. Success is not predicated on passenger traffic or any one business area alone, and specialist operations are an essential part of their wider offering. One such opportunity being progressed now with energy and great enthusiasm is a proposal to offer spaceport facilities. Uh, and Presswick is very well placed to become the UK's first spaceport for horizontal launch once the UK government put in place the required regulatory framework. Not only would Presswick stand to benefit, so too would Scotland. And of course, we provided support uh, to any uh, area of Scotland looking to try and benefit from this. Uh, but Presswick would present a world-class facility on their own doorstep to launch Scottish-built satellites into space. Presswick is also renowned for its freight operation. The airport can accommodate heavy, awkward and outsized loads. Now, although handling dedicated freighters is a highly competitive market, this is an area where the airport will continue to develop its business. The cargo team has a great can-do attitude, putting the customer first and working in a flexible way that enhances the reputation of the business. Uh, Presswick is also a prime contender to be the Scottish logistics hub for expansion at Heathrow Airport to support the prefabrication and consolidation of components. Again, a specialist operation that fits well with Presswick's wider offering. Uh, recently, the airport has seen significant improvement from handling aircraft through its fixed-based operation. This is a highly competitive environment with airports in Ireland and Northern Ireland competing with Scotland to handle military and private flights which require fuel stops when transiting UK airspace. Although military movements in 2016-17 were down compared to 2013-14 when the Scottish Government took over ownership and actually just over a third of the level of military movements in 2000, fixed-based operations continue to be an important part of Presswick Airport's offering and are part of the strategic plan going forward. Now, President Officer, I know there's a great deal of interest in military handling and a desire for more information from some members. Both myself and the Chief Executive of Transport Scotland have suggested recently to both the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee and the Public Audit Committee that members should visit Presswick to find out more about their operations and plans for the future. And I repeat that offer today. Uh, the senior team at the airport operating at arm's length from government will be happy to discuss these matters 
in an open and transparent way. They have to, of course, respect the need to avoid providing information that would be damaging to the commercial interests of Presswick or giving a competitive advantage to other airports. And just on that point, presenting officer, I have reviewed the information that we've not been able to release in response to a large number of freedom of information requests. I am confident the information that has been redacted is commercially confidential, but I am happy to ask the um, operations company to facilitate if the party representatives uh, here today want to visit and speak to them as much information being provided as possible. Uh, and, presiding officer, the publication of the company's annual report in December shows that the airport is moving in the right direction. In the last financial year, passenger numbers were up 8%, aircraft movements were up 8%, Turnover increased by £2.1 million to £13.6 million. At the same time, operating losses have decreased from £8.7 million to £7.8 million. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, there is a great deal of support for Presswick Airport and a desire to see it succeed. It benefits from a dedicated and passionate workforce. It benefits also from being flexible, responsive and available 24-7. And it also benefits from a very supportive local council and supportive local MPs and MSPs. We have always acknowledged there can be no quick fix, but we are certain that Presswick can have a positive future and can make an even greater contribution to the Ayrshire economy. There is still much progress to be made, but the business is definitely showing signs of improvement and the team, with their renewed sense of purpose and ambition, will continue to pursue every opportunity to grow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary, and I'm sure you appreciate there's quite a lot of interest uh, from members in asking questions. We'll start with Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. May I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for her advance sight of his statement. It was very helpful and for also updating Parliament today on the progress that Presswick is making. As a member of the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee, I'm very happy to take up the offer to visit Presswick and meet its new senior management team to get an update, and I hope to do, do so as soon as I can. Um, uh, there is no doubt as to the importance of Presswick Airport to Ayrshire's economy, uh, but there is no denying that the airport is still making substantial and significant losses. To date, it has accumulated over £40 million uh, of taxpayers' investment. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, what specific KPIs is the uh, management team at Presswick Airport uh, working towards in terms of uh, turning around the fortunes of the airport? And can he give any further indication as to when we might expect the airport to be returned to the private sector. I've been in this parliament for two years. We've asked this question a number of times. The answer does tend to be the same, and that's be, that is that it will, it, will, it will be sold back to the private sector when it's ready to do so, and when there's a buyer ready to pay. But how many more years of continuous uh, public investment will we see before the government will come to a decision on when is the right time to hand it back to the private sector? And I think it's only right that the parliament, on behalf of taxpayers, ask these questions of the government. Yes, of course, I have no problem with those kind of questions being asked, and uh, both the member uh, who has asked the question and others have asked those questions. And we have said each time that, and we said this at the point when we took ownership of the airport, that we can't say. And we did also say it would be a long term um, a perspective for us to try and uh, get the uh, airport back into the private sector. It obviously has to become an attractive proposition for the private sector in the first place. And uh, the member quite rightly says, uh, you know, up to £40 million pounds up to the end of March 2018, uh, the contribution so far. But I would also say that uh, I'm not sure how long the member's been familiar with the airport, but if he was aware of its condition when it was bought by the Scottish Government, everyone knows there was a great deal of work to be done. Investment had not been carried out in the airport for a number of years at the required level. And that is, by and large, where that uh, money is going uh, towards. In relation to what the uh, airport management worked to, that is perhaps a, a very good basis for the discussion that he can have with the operations company when he meets there. But what we have said to them, and obviously we have seen the annual report, which I mentioned in my statement, is they have to concentrate on a different, uh, a wide-ranging portfolio of different potential business opportunities. Passenger traffic is extremely competitive and very expensive sometimes in order to attract new business. Uh, so that's why they're concentrating on the fixed-wing operations, uh, on the freight, which has been quite successful as well, on the transiting aircraft. That's why they're concentrating on these different things. So we can't give a date for when we expect it to transfer back to the private sector. We do talk to anybody that shows an interest in doing that. Uh, and we are seeing things moving in the right direction with the increase in turnover and the reduction in losses. But it will take some time for us to achieve that. Jackie Bailey. Unlike other Scottish airports, the trend at Presswick is for passenger numbers to be going down. Cargo numbers are also going down. And the only thing going up are military flights and the amount taxpayers are having to pay because the airport continues to lose money. The SNP government has increased loan funding for Presswick Airport 
to £48 million. That's more than double the £21 million originally said by ministers would be needed to return the airport to profit. But it's still losing money. Scottish Enterprise has also provided at least £650,000 directly to Ryanair, the only passenger service left at the airport. And with heavily subsidised landing charges as well, is the Cabinet Secretary sure that this doesn't amount to state aid? And given the recent decision at Charlois Airport in Belgium by the European Court of Justice, has the Cabinet Secretary taken legal advice on state aid or spoken to the European Commission about Presswick? And presiding officer, four years on from buying the airport for a pound, can the Cabinet Secretary, and I repeat the point made already, tell us when the taxpayers' 48 million will be repaid and would he even consider selling at least 50% of the airport to start the process of returning it to the private sector? Can I, can I first of all uh, correct uh, Jackie Bailey's statement? It's not the case that military aircraft, uh, the number of movements are going up. Uh, I mentioned in 2000, when I think uh, Jackie Bailey was actually a minister, it was uh, nearly 9,000 military aircraft movements. It's just over 3,500 just now. So it's substantially down from what it was previously and down from the last couple of years as well. Um, it's also true to say, and we were very clear about this, that it has to be a long-term engagement. I thought, I think at the time we had support from the Labour Party for trying to save the jobs that were there. That support is not evident from the 32 parliamentary questions which Jackie Bailey has asked before this year, eight more this year, the endless uh, FOIs, the letters to the airport to myself, happy to answer all these questions and to be as open as it can be, but it's not obvious to me that we've got that level of support which we thought we had from the Labour Party in terms of saving these jobs. On the point about uh, state aid, of course we take advice, I can't confirm or otherwise uh, legal advice, but of course at the point that we bought the um, airport, we did check into the legal position of course of the Scottish airport and making sure of course that we're always compliant with state aid regulations. On the point about a 50% uh, share, that's the first time I've heard that suggestion, but the same response would have to be made as I've made uh, to Jamie Green. For that to be viable, you'd have to have somebody interested in doing that. And I think that's why the investment that we've made in the airport, as I say, the improving uh, situation just now where you've seen a reduction in the losses and an increase in turnover are given time to work through to make it an attractive proposition for the private sector. Okay, the parties have their opening statement, so opening question. So if the 10 remaining questioners can be short and sharp and the Minister similarly, Kenneth Gibson to be followed by John Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's statement. Uh, Presswick has always been in the shadow of Glasgow and being named Glasgow Presswick Airport hasn't helped. Thousands of people supported a petition and 18 MSPs signed a motion I submitted last month calling for Presswick to be renamed Robert Burns International Airport. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that, as with John Lennon, George Best and Louis Armstrong airports, naming one after a renowned individual can boost its identity and thus help attract investment, passengers and jobs who do therefore support the renaming of Presswick? Cabinet Secretary. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. So I think I heard a suggestion uh, from the side there of calling it the Kenneth Gibson Airport. Um, and who knows what uh, the sky would truly be the limit if that was to be the case, I'm sure. And the issue of the name of the airport, of course, is one for uh, the airport uh, themselves. They would take decisions such as that. And it has been something which, as Kenny Gibson well knows, has been canvassed uh, over the years. I think what is really important is that we've continued to invest in this airport. The option was an easy one, to walk away. Um, as is, you know, seems to be implicit in some questions that are being asked, to walk away, to leave 300 people without jobs and a huge impact on the economy. And I know that Kenneth Gibson, both from his question now and earlier on general question time, is very concerned about the health of the local economy. And that perhaps underlies his suggestion about the renaming of the airport. Uh, but that is a decision, as I say, which will be taken by the airport themselves. And he might want to write or even take up the offer that I've made to other members as well to go to visit uh, the management team, the operations uh, board of the airport, and take up that particular discussion with them. John Scott to be followed by Willie Coffey. Thank you, President Officer. Can I too thank the Cabinet Secretary advance copy of his statement, the positive tone of it, and I'd like to say I was and remain supportive of the government action thus far and also for their support of Spaceport, unlike J Jackie Bailey and the Labour Party. <laughs> However, I also note the difficulty the management teams have had in attracting more passenger air traffic to Prestwick. And I wonder if perhaps a change of emphasis in the development of the airport is now required in terms of creating jobs for Ayrshire. For example, I know of a company which is keen to expand their MRO facilities and also create training capabilities for engineers. And to do this, more hangar space will be required to deliver these new opportunities and more jobs in this sector to Prestwick. 
Can the Cabinet Secretary give me any indication of how supportive he and Scottish Enterprise and the management team at Prestwick can be about the building of new hangar space at Prestwick Airport, where an unmet demand for hangar space currently exists? Cabinet Secretary. Hey, well, can I thank uh, John Scott for his constructive uh, suggestion uh, and, and say to him that he will know, as well as I do, that we have seen real moves from the airport in that particular direction. So in particular, Chevron, the company which opened a very impressive uh, repair, maintenance and overhaul facility uh, on the airfield in 2017. A company coming from the north of England, which even before it had taken ownership of the hangar, could guarantee to fill it right away. Um, so real uh, demand that's there. And that's been extremely successful. And as the member says, providing vital revenue for the airport. So given that success, and also given the annual plan, which I mentioned previously, that the airport uh, operations company are are very aware of those opportunities, we would expect them to do that. We don't intervene in particular commercial decisions. Of course, if Scottish Enterprise have got a role to play, then we can make sure that that happens. We don't intervene in those, uh, uh, the, those particular discussions. But of course, if there's more to be done in terms of hangar space, uh, other fixed base operations that can take place, more to be done in terms of freight, then we'd want to see that happen, and we would want to encourage that. Willie Coffey to be followed by Ross Greer. Thanks very much, President Officer. No wonder there's no Labour MPs or MSPs left in Ayrshire with that support that's coming from the Labour Party today. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that Presswick Airport has huge potential for future development and it's important that the management of the airport are able to pursue viable opportunities that allow the airport to fulfil that potential, including Spaceport, for which Presswick is surely the standout location? Cabinet Secretary. Hey, can I say that I think Willie Coffey is exactly right, that there is huge potential at the airport. So the point has been made uh, previously about uh, the competition within Scotland, so Glasgow and Edinburgh both doing exceptionally well, as is Aberdeen, uh, doing exceptionally well in terms of passenger uh, traffic, so it's a very competitive environment. But the different airports which we have in Scotland can often offer different things, as I've tried to lay out so far. And I think there are huge and unique facilities at uh, Presswick, not least given its... Um, track record in terms of reliability with weather, which most of us will have known about for many years. So I think there is a huge potential. It should be the case that the management uh, should be as inventive and as innovative as possible, looking for new business. We should be supportive in that. Uh, remembering, first of all, as I've said, about the importance of the people that actually work there. Uh, the people whose livelihoods and the families who depend on the people that work there and are associated with uh, the airport. It's vitally important that we keep this airport and it's also vitally important that we grow it. And that's where our efforts and those of the management team have been directed. Ross Greer, followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you. In response to concerns about US military operations at Prestwick, the Scottish Government have suggested no one should be surprised, given it's gone on since the times of Elvis Presley's visit. The difference is the airport was not owned by the Scottish public through the government until recently. Despite what the Cabinet Secretary said about Prestwick Airport's arm's length relationship with government, he himself told a committee that he had been talking to the airport about specific commercial opportunities. Yeah. And the First Minister told the Parliament earlier this month that if the government were not happy with what the airport was doing, they would ask serious questions. Given that we know frontline US military operations are operating out of the airport, and given the First Minister's comments, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to confirm that the SNP Scottish Government are happy to support US military operations in Iraq, Syria and elsewhere using Scottish public property? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, can I say, first of all, it's not just the case that this activity goes back to the time uh, of Elvis Presley coming on a military flight, I think, from Germany en route back to the US. This is the same planning framework that has applied for decades at Presswick. And it's not the case we've seen, as I've already said to Jackie Bailey, an increase in terms of the military movements. We've seen in 2000, uh, around 9,000 movements in the year 2000, 9,000 movements of military aircraft. It's around 3,600 uh, currently. It's also the case that any question over questionable military uh, uh, activities in airspace is one that is completely reserved to the UK government, whether it's aerospace, whether it's defence or whether it's security. It is the case that this is a legitimate part of the business uh, of the airport, that they have sought this. And I would make the offer once again, as I did in my opening statement to the member, if he is concerned about this and I accept he has a concern about this if he wants to go and visit and I made this offer to the committee as the Chief Executive of Transport Scotland did to the Public Audit Committee as well and asked them specifically about these and also asked them within the limits of course of commercial confidentiality what they're able to say about the military activity that's going on then I would make that offer and I will make that plea uh, to the management team as well but this is a, a vital part of what the airport does it has done it for decades and it will continue to do it in future. Mike Rumbles be followed by Emma Harper. <clears throat> Last year, when the management team 
appeared before the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee, we heard that Prestwick was not viable without Ryanair, that passenger numbers had fallen, movement had fallen, and freight handling had plummeted. The management team told us that they can pay their £40 million loan back to the taxpayer by the year 2032. With Prestwick still losing £8 million every year, does the Cabinet Secretary really believe that this is an achievable date to return taxpayers' money? Cabinet Secretary. Not only do I believe that that's an achievable date, I think it's perfectly possible that it can be achieved earlier than that date. Although I would say and reiterate what I, what I have said and what the First Minister and others have said since the very point at which we took over the uh, airport, that it will be a long-term investment made by the Scottish Government. The reasons for that, as I've mentioned, is the previous owners, Infratil, were not making the investment. Anybody that's been to visit the airport will know this for a fact. There's not been the investment in the physical infrastructure of the airport, and that investment's necessary to gaining new business. So I think it was the case that uh, a Mike Rumbles is right to the extent there's been the reduction in passenger traffic, and particularly he mentions Ryanair. Now, that was happening previously, and of course that was exacerbated afterwards by the uh, hiatus in terms of the ownership. But they, uh, and that is the, perhaps the most competitive and difficult area that the airport is involved in. But other parts of the business are turning around. It's not quite £8 million, it's £7.8 million, not far off £8 million. But we are seeing an increase in turnover and a reduction in losses. I would have hoped that the Liberal Democrats would not follow the path of the Labour Party. We continue to support this. Of course, ask questions. I understand asking questions, but continue to at least make it obvious to the people in Presswick and Ayrshire that they are supportive of the support being provided by the Scottish Government and the future success of the airport. Emma Harper to be followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that Prestwick Airport could be an important staging point for tourists to enter the region and explore the southwest of Scotland, including the coastal and inland route that I'm working with local stakeholders to promote, and therefore it would benefit the southwest world class food and drink industry? Cabinet Secretary. I think the kind of innovation which uh, Emma Harper has shown in her question about uh, getting the benefits of travel to the southwest is uh, exactly what we want to see at the airport. And of course, what she says is true. I do remember being on a flight myself from Presswick in the 1980s, uh, coming back from Canada, when it stopped at Presswick and you weren't allowed to get off. You had to go down to London uh, before you're allowed to get off. And I think there is uh, no question, given the attractions that we have in terms of the southwest of Scotland, in terms of the west of Scotland more generally, and also in terms of the huge increase we've seen in tourism in Scotland just this week, the uh, increased numbers to record numbers to uh, attractions across Scotland, that that must form part of the future of a successful Presswick Airport. The introduction, uh, the, the sustainability of more tourist traffic coming to the area and enjoying the benefits of visiting Scotland. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. It's uh, important for the local economy to turn around Presswick Airport and investment, for example, in the A76 might certainly help boost tourist numbers, but what it can't be turned around on is the basis of military flights. In opposition, the SNP criticise the use of the airport for these flights. They condemn military action by the US and they criticise Donald Trump. So it's not therefore a bit hypocritical for the Cabinet Secretary to now turn a blind eye and stay silent when he's fully aware of the extent to which Presswick is being earmarked to take more US Air Force military flights in the future and when there are reports that his own Transport Scotland officials are lobbying for Presswick to do more business with the Trump Organisation and the US Air Force. And could that the Cabinet Secretary tell us specifically whether Presswick Airport has been used for either rendition flights or live missions to Syria by the US Air Force? Cabinet uh, first of all, again, uh, Colin Smith is wrong if he's suggesting that there's been this increase in military flights. I go back to the point that in the year 2000, 9,000 military aircraft movements were made. In the year just past, we had 3,600 movements in terms of military aircraft. It is as legitimate now as it has been over the decades that not just Presswick Airport, but virtually every airport in the UK accommodates military flights and also provides uh, fuel for doing them. It is not easy to see in the comments made either by Colin Smith or Jackie Bailey one iota of support for Presswick Airport, for the employees that work there and its continued success in future. And perhaps just once in a while, if they express that support, whilst of course asking legitimate questions, then people in Presswick might take some comfort from that support. Can I thank members? I'm conscious that there are five more members still wish to ask questions, but we've just not got enough time this afternoon. Point of order, Mr Harvey. I'm grateful, uh, presiding officer. I'm afraid that the minister's position is still directly contradictory and that our 
opportunity to question him has not given us a chance to resolve that. He tells us today there is, there is no role for ministers in specific commercial discussions. He told Parliament last year, in the past two or three weeks, I have been talking to management about specific commercial opportunities. What chance do our standing orders give us, presiding officer, to allow the minister, actually to require the minister, to resolve this direct contradiction? A visit to the airport won't answer this. He must answer it. I, I appreciate Mr Harvey's frustration and that of other members in the sense that I've got a, a lot of interest in asking questions. However, Mr Harvey, as a member of the Bureau, will know the restrictions on our time. He'll also be aware, for example, that we've already trimmed minutes of every single speaker in the next debate. And, if we're, and we're currently eating into the debate time that's already been allocated to that, uh, debate on immigration, which I think is of importance to everybody here. Uh, I am very aware of the, of the interest, the level of interest. It's up to Mr Harvey, as a member of the Bureau, or any other member, to raise it with a business manager, to pencil out the time. There are other opportunities and ways to ask questions of the Minister, written questions, letters, raise it in committee, and so on. Uh, however, Mr Harvey is free to bring it back to the Bureau to discuss at a future date. However, we have no more time this afternoon. And we'll move on now, if I can, to the Scottish Government debate, Scotland's population needs and migration policy.